Hello everybody, welcome back to more Plants vs. Zombies. We've cleared the first three worlds now. We've had the daytime levels, the nighttime levels, and the pool levels, so now we're off to world four. It's gonna be nighttime again, and... Well, fiends are about to get interesting. Let's start. So, we're at the pool, but it's nighttime now. <laughs> you know, they used to call me Fogman, because I would hang out in the fog and jump out at people. Ah, those were the days. And here we go. So this is World 4, the fog levels. So, still the pool, so we still have the six lanes, we still have the water lanes in the middle. But it's nighttime now, so there's no sun that falls from the sky. Our mushrooms are awake, so we can use them again. And there are, is fog on this level. Which basically means that the uh, few columns that are closest to the right side where the zombies spawn will be covered in fog, so we won't be able to see anything past there. So we basically won't get as much opportunity to, to see what zombies are coming in which lane. That makes things a little bit annoying. And we have a new zombie type, the Jack in the Box zombie. I'll get into him when we start. In the meantime though, we gotta pick our plants. So because it's nighttime, we definitely want our puff shrooms. We also want sun shrooms. We got a new plant, the sea shroom. The sea shroom is literally just the puff shroom, but you it's aquatic, so you put it in the water. However, there is one difference, and that's the sea shroom has a much slower recharge. So you can't spam them nearly as much. Now, I know the reason why they did this is because the pool lanes don't get attacked as much as the land lanes, but still, it means that sea shroom just honestly isn't that good. By the time the zombies actually start attacking the water, you easily have enough sun to just use lily pads. But you know, we're going to take them for a spin. We're going to take lily pads just because, well... There's pool levels, so we're gonna need them. I like scaredy shrooms. They're nice to have. This is gonna be a pretty short level, so I don't imagine we'll need a whole lot. We'll definitely take the doom shrooms. Doom shrooms are not quite as good on the pool levels because they pull up a 5x5 five five area, but this is six lanes, so there will be one lane at least that escapes from its wrath. Still not too bad. I'll also take ice shroom. That could be nice. And one more. Uh, let's get fume shroom. The mushrooms are generally the best for nighttime stages. Let's rock. So yeah, as you can see, we can't see what goes beyond there. I do love the fog music though, it's very good. So yeah, we're getting the uh, sun shrooms again. And as usual, we're just gonna basically spam plant the puff shrooms. So now I guess I'll start talking about the new enemy type in this world, the jack-in-the-box zombies. Jack-in-the-box zombies are very, very obnoxious. Because, uh... Well, they're pretty fast, so they will charge you down pretty quickly. And also, their main gimmick is that they can uh, make... They have a jack-in-the-box that they're constantly winding up. Uh, as you might uh, have been able to guess based on their name. So they, they're constantly winding up their jack-in-the-box. And when the jack-in-the-box goes off, uh, it will cause them to blow up like an enemy cherry bomb. And blow up a free-by-free -free area, insta-killing any plants that are nearby. Not fun. Now, it's not too bad in adventure mode, but in some modes, the jack-in-the-box zombies are literally going to be the most annoying zombies you face. More on them later. But for the time being, they're not too bad. As long as we've got our supply of puff shrooms up and running. I'm not too worried. Now, for a level like this, the sea shrooms will be just fine for dealing with the aquatic zombies. Uh-oh. So that's how we know the jack-in-the-box zombie is coming. I'm gonna put a uh, scaredy shroom up there. There you go. Take that. Again, scaredy shrooms are really nice just because of how much reach they have. Combined with the fact that, uh, they're very cheap to plant. Very nice. So you might be wondering... Because the Doom Shroom can create a crater when it blows up, preventing you from planting anything there, you might wonder what happens if you put a Doom Shroom on a lily pad. Would that 
just leave a crater in the water? The answer is yes, actually. <laughs> Doom Shrooms will create craters in the water, so you can't, it'll blow up the lily pad as well, and you won't be able to actually uh, plant anything there for the time being. So we'll use that and a Doom Shroom. So as you can see, we blew up everything except the stuff in the... Oh, I guess there was more zombies coming. I guess that I put the Doom Shroom down a little too early. There were two. There were still zombies that were spawning in, so... Oh, well. Well, there we go, and we have a new plant! Our new plant is the Plantern. Lights up an area, letting you see through the fog. So it costs 25 sun? Not too bad, this is basically a way to counteract the fog in this world. Being able to see through the fog is pretty nice, however the problem is... It has a limited range. It only really affects, I think... It might only be a 3x3 area or like a 4x4 area. It doesn't light up the entire level when you put it there, so you have to put it fairly close to where the zombies spawn in. Which is annoying, because then that means that the plantern is liable to get chewed, and the plantern has a fairly slow recharge, so... Not a huge fan of it, but we'll at least use it for a couple levels. Oh boy, football zombie's back. Alright, we'll do Puff Shroom. We'll still do Sea Shroom. Yeah, man, Scaredy Shroom. Honestly, I don't... F no, we're taking the lily pads, because I like putting some Sun Shrooms on the lily pads. Uh, we'll take a... Where is he? There's Squash. We'll take Plantern. And we can take one of her. Not Ice Shroom, we'll t still take Doom Shroom, though. Doom Shroom is crazy good. <laughs> so now you'll see there's actually more fog on this level than there was on the last one. The amount of fog you can face in a given level uh, can change, so sometimes it'll only be like three lanes that have fog, and sometimes it'll take up like more than half the stage. So it can be problematic in that regard. Okay, so it's the Puff Shroom up there that's attacking, so there's a zombie in the top column. Or the top lane. So yeah, Planter is not necessary, but, he, but it's helpful to have. So yeah, part of the fog levels are just seeing the animations of your puff shrooms to see where the zombies are, even if you can't see through the fog. And I just realized I probably should have taken Walnut instead of Doom Shroom, because if I have Walnut, I can put a Plantern down and then put a Walnut down in front of the Plantern. Speaking of which. So there, Plantern is lighting up the top part of the level, but not the bottom part. And as you can see, Plantern has taken a little bit of time to recharge. Which is a bit unfortunate. Alright, I know there's a Puff Shrooms there, so I'll delete it so we can put in a Plantern. put a Puff Shroom there so that he'll eat that instead of the Plantern. And I'm gonna put Scaredy Shrooms in the lanes that have Planterns. Because again, I want to make sure that they don't die. So good. Again, you don't really need a lot of firepower on the nighttime levels because there aren't as many zombies on the nighttime levels as there are in the daytime ones. Uh oh. That's not a good sound. Yep, that's what happened. So 
His, uh, it's totally random whether the Jack in the Box pops, and as you see, he just blew up one of my Puff Shrooms. Which, I mean, not a huge loss, but still. So now if I put a Lily Pad down followed by a Doom Shroom, it destroys the Lily Pad, and you'll see that there's like a little black hole in the water there. So that's basically the water version of a crater, and as you can see, you can't put a Lily Pad there. So don't think you can escape this by putting a Doom Shroom on the water. Although I do recommend putting Doom Shrooms on the water, because that allows you to reach the largest area. Maybe sea shrooms aren't as bad as I thought they were, but they're good enough to kind of hold their own, but there are some levels where it won't be enough to just have sea shrooms in the water. Keeping the squash around in case we encounter a football zombie or two. We got a lot of sun. I like having at least one plant in front of the planterns so that way the zombies aren't as easy. It's not as easy for the zombies to eat the planterns up. Nicely done, my scaredy shrooms. I changed the plan. We're using a doom shroom to take care of that football zombie. There we go. Second fog level down, and we get ourselves a new plant. One of the more lackluster points of the game, we get Cactus! Shoots spikes that can pop balloons. So, Cactus is basically just pea shoot. Like, Cactus is literally just pea shooter, except 25 extra sun and cannot synergize with Torchwood, but instead has the ability to pop balloons, which we're going to see in the next level. So this introduces a new zombie type. That's a balloon zombie! Balloon Zombie is kind of annoying because he has a balloon and he will literally fly over all of your plants and none of your plants will be able to reach him, except at this point for the cactus. The cactus will be able to basically extend itself upwards, shoot its spike to pop the balloon, and then it'll kind of turn into a regular zombie. If you do not have something to counter the balloon zombie like a cactus, then the balloon zombie literally cannot be damaged and he'll just fly right into your house, even bypass the lawnmower and defeat you. So, there we go. So, Puff Shroom, Sea Shroom, Sun Shroom, Lily Pad, Cactus, Plantern. I will take a Walnut this time. And let's see, do I want Scaredy Shroom still? Uh. Yeah, I don't need Doom Shroom, so I'll take Scaredy Shroom. I like Scaredy Shroom. More Fog. By the way, the music that plays on the fog levels, it, the name of the song is called Rigor More Mist. It's amazing. Alright. Same struggle. Okay, so the zombie's in this lane. Second from the top. So I'll give some backup there to hopefully preserve this guy's lifespan a little bit. And we have walnuts this time so as to just protect the planterns. We don't need tall nuts for that. Tall nut would be a little bit overkill. Again, that is the issue I have with planterns. Because you have to plant them so close 
to where the zombies spawn in, they're constantly in danger of being chewed, and because of their slow recharge, if one of them gets eaten, it's kind of a pretty annoying deal. There we go. Perfect example right here. Scaredy Shroom back there. No big deal. Put a planter over there. There we go. Okay, full in zombie, so we're gonna need a cactus. There we go. Beautiful. Put a walnut right there. Protect the plantern. Beautiful. This is great. As you can see, once we get cone zombies and once we have inevitably get bucket zombies, sea shrimps won't really be enough. But for the time being, they should be alright. I guess we can also put walnuts in the water as well. At this point, I'm trying to get a cactus in every lane. One important thing to note, though, is that the balloon zombies can never go in the water. So you'll never see balloon zombies going down the pool lane. So you don't need cactus in the pool lanes. But as you can see, cactus has the exact same DPS as pea shooter. So it's not, like, a very good plant. I generally only ever use cactus on uh, this level. Because as soon as we beat this level, we're going to get another plant that basically does what Cactus does, only better. Okay, that's a lot of zombies that are heading over here. That is a lot. Yeah, see, this is why sea shrooms aren't always sufficient. Yikes, I did not expect this many zombies, so my only real hope here is I gotta hope that that walnut recharges in time. Uh -oh, this is this is actually quite bad. Okay, this is why we bought the pool cleaner. I did not expect like five zombies to pop up there, but we bought the pool cleaner, so there we go. We defeated them. Saved by the pool cleaner. And here we get a new plant, the Blover. Blows away all balloon zombies and fog. This is a great plant. So, this is kind of an alternate version of Plantern and Cactus. If you plant one of these, it'll just instantly clear away all of the fog, and the fog will not return for like 30 to 60 seconds, I think. And it just insta-kills any balloon zombie. And now, if, if you're constantly getting barraged by balloon zombies over and over and over and over again, then yeah, spending 100 sun per time will that will not be super cost effective but here's the thing you very very rarely ever have to face off against balloon zombies even on levels where balloon zombies appear you'll only see a couple of them so i think blover is a great plant as a result also blover has a fast recharge so all you really need for him is sun which is great oh boy dolphin rider zombie returns okay so at this point we've outgrown the sea shroom we don't want him anymore he's not good enough to be able to take on the guys over here so we want Puff Shroom, we want Sun Shroom, we want Lily Pad, we want Blover. Goodbye Cactus, goodbye Plantern. At this point, I'm probably never going to pick Cactus again. Cactus is just not very good. I definitely want Scaredy Shroom, because I like that range. I like Doom Shroom, for sure. Um, For the Dolphin Rider Zombies, I want Tall Nut to keep them out. And what else? We've got some cheap plants. Maybe Ice Shroom? Maybe Fume Shroom, actually. Yeah, I like Fume Shroom. So this does mean if you opt to use Blover instead of Plantern, this means you will have to deal with the initial annoying fog for a little bit longer. But it'll be nice because you don't have to have plants that you constantly are protecting. Because you can put Blover in, like, the back of the lane and it still blows away all of the, uh, fog. Alright, second lane from the top is where the zombie is. 
So the fog levels, I would say, are actually the toughest levels in the game. Like, even World 5 is not this annoying. Because for this, you have to juggle, like, nighttime gimmick plus the pool gimmick and the gimmick of fog. All of which are quite obnoxious. So I already know, because just because of the nature of the game, we're not going to be seeing zombies in the pool for a little bit, so I'm not worried about putting offensive plants in the pool right away. Once I'm done with the sun uh, shrooms, though, I will be putting scary shrooms in the back. I suppose I could also put puff shrooms in the water. Oh, I, that was good timing because, as you can see, I finally put up all of my uh, sun shrooms and now we've got stuff in the water. I think I'll put a fume shroom in the water as well just because I don't want, if a zombie ends up getting close enough, I don't want the scaredy shrooms to be gone. Oh, no. And yeah, it looks like that guy was a conehead zombie. Let's use a blower. I'm sick of all this fog. Beautiful. This is going great. Let's put some more puff shrooms up front. And then we'll start replacing the uh, puff shrooms that we have with ever scaredy shrooms or fume shrooms. Okay, the fog is starting to return because our blover only lasts for a certain amount of time, but that's okay. Uh-oh. Okay, that's, that's actually kind of annoying. So he's going to end up eating my fume shroom. I didn't want to do that, but I kind of had no choice. Those Dolphin Rider zombies, man, they're annoying. Get rid of the balloon zombies, because that's the only way we can. That balloon zombie thinks he's so smart, but we're going to take quick care of him. That is one annoying thing if you let the balloon zombie go too far ahead, the scaredy shrooms will cower. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not gonna let you take out all my plants. No siree. Nope, you're not jumping over that. So as you can see, the fog levels, I'm actually starting to struggle a little bit. This is where the game actually gets a little bit on the tough side. A lot of the tough part of the fog levels is just you can't see what's coming and there are six lanes to deal with. But the zombies themselves aren't really any tougher in the night on the fog levels than in the past. In fact, I'd say they're easier. Like, we aren't seeing anything like zombonies. Alright, huge wave is coming. Which means it'll be time for Doom Shroom. Doom 
Doom. Also, Doom Shrooms do blow up. Uh, the balloon zombies. Whoosh! Now, what the heck is this? A taco? You found a taco! What are you going to do with a taco? I don't know, let's continue. You found my magic taco! I must have it! I'll give you a thousand dollars! Yes, the taco is mine! Why'd I give you so much money for a taco? Because I'm crazy! Take a look around my shop. You'll notice I got some new items in stock. And it's true, so he still has that nine seed slots for 20,000, which is kind of a lot. Still has Gatling Peace, still has Twin Sunflower. But there are two new plants that we can purchase, starting with Gloom Shroom. Plant these on your fume shrooms to turn them into Gloom Shrooms. Gloom Shrooms do rapid attacks to a small area. So this actually is not just a direct upgrade of a plant, but this basically changes your plant into a different one. So the fume shroom, if it, you plant this on it, will turn it into a Gloom Shroom. So the Gloom Shroom will no longer shoot straight forward at like a couple of squares in front of it. It will only be able to attack the squares adjacent to it. So basically the three by three area around it. But its damage output is insane. Like it is ridiculously powerful, the amount of damage that it deals there. And it hits every single zombie in its range. So it's an absurdly powerful plant if you know how to use it properly. We're not going to buy it right now, but we will in the future. And then we also have Cattail. Plant these on your lily pads to turn them into cattails. Cattails can attack any lane and take down balloon zombies. Cattails are ridiculous. Cattails literally can like rapidly shoot spikes. They have a way higher DPS than something like a pea shooter. And the spikes home in on zombies and can literally hit them in any lane. So yeah, once you have these, you'll never need a uh, cactus ever again. Again, I'm saving up really for that nine seed slots because that's really, really good. But, so I'm saving my pennies for now. Our prices are unbelievable. <laughs> Me and my buddy Harvey Flatcaster used to break vases when we were born. Well, Harvey's out of town, so you're coming with me, Harvey number two. Break it like you mean it, Harvey. <laughs> Click on a vase to see what's inside. Destroy all zombies and vases to finish the level. So this is Vase Breaker. We never know whether the vases, what the vases are going to have. So sometimes they'll have plants that we can put down. Sometimes they will have zombies. So if this has a regular zombie, I'm going to wait for him to die before I break any of these other vases. That is a regular zombie. That is a squash. That also has a squash. And as you can see, there were not that many zombies. So that first level was really easy. <laughs> Man, you broke those vases nice and good. Broke them like the time I broke my back digging through those trash cans. Here, I brought you more vases. Gotta be careful about breaking them too fast, though. You don't want to end up with more zombies than you can handle. <laughs> so this is round two. There are more vases. The green vases will always have plants inside them. Okay, so if squash appear, I like saving. I like trying to open a couple of vases to see if there's like a particularly tough zombie to deal with. There we go, like the football zombie. Or the bucket zombie. Not too bad. As long as, as, long as you kind of know what to expect, it's not too bad. Alright! This should be the last of them. Break these and you'll be all done. And we still have the lawnmowers as uh, a safety net. Hypno shroom, eh? Oh, Disco Zombie, yes please. Jack in the Box Zombie will break open everything in your way. Oh no, my Disco Zombie died. And there we go, that should do it. Pretty easy. Vase Breaker can get very difficult later on, but for the time being, it's pretty simple. There we go. Beautiful in here. That's a funky looking plant now, isn't it? <laughs> we get ourselves a new plant, the Split Pea. Uh, it shoots peas forwards and backwards. So it's basically a pea shooter for 25 more sun, but it shoots backwards. Now, you might be wondering, 
why the heck would I ever want to be able to shoot backwards? All the zombies come at you from the right side and you shoot to the right. Why would I want to shoot to the left? That's a fantastic question, one that we will have to answer next time on Plants vs. Zombies. Thanks for watching, everybody. Next time, we'll be finishing these fog levels, and uh, believe me, they're about to get even nastier than they were before. I did not expect me to have to end up using a pool cleaner to beat one of those levels, but man, apparently five zombies all popped up in the ocean at the end and in one lane, which is very unlucky. That almost never happens, so... Oh well, that's why you buy those pool cleaners, because you never know if you need to get out of jail free card. Anyhow, look forward to next time. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless.